plan, yes? No. I was very excited because I love working with Johnny. Um, I find the Jack Sparrow, Barbosa, ongoing, annoying conflict uh, very delightful to engage in. And the writers somehow seemed to constantly come up with, you know, I thought after the first three where they'd explored every possibility about from the world of swashbuckling and you know, buried treasure, the curse, the big Wagnerian dimensions of, you know, sea monsters and gods and goddesses and uh, the East India Trading Company. I thought there's nothing else left about the golden age of piracy or the mythology associated around it. Because I, I hadn't thought about mermaids, you know. And in this film, um, by the fa very fact that uh, deep in his nature is that he's a very calculating survivor and so he's got himself onto what he thinks is a, a very satisfying pension plan because he's not getting any younger and he's looking for um, something to you know keep him up there in the important um, playing stakes so he's joined forces with the king and has become a privateer. We just said, well, let's just think of ourselves as an old married couple. Constantly, you know, no, you know, it's like map reading. No, you have got it. It's not right. You know what I mean? Um, that was great to play. And we sort of realized by the end, we thought, you know, if these two could actually collaborate and not lock horns all the time, they would be the most fantastic, unstoppable team but they're worlds apart because Barbosa is purely a, a strategic thinker. You know, he's probably the brightest person I would think, that's how I think of him, in this, the whole storyline, because he's always one step ahead of everyone and will stop at nothing to achieve it. Uh, Jack bobs along the river of life, improvising, taking huge daring risks which always pay off for him even if he's being blown from one ship to another he always lands and ends up looking like Bugs Bunny leaning against the mast you know All part of the plan yes no